Uh, we hope you're having a great day and, and uh, you're staying safe in the snow and the weather uh, that at least central Illinois is getting uh, uh, throughout uh, these few days. Uh, but I wanted to uh, uh, to kind of bring you up to speed and, and maybe settle some uh, uh, settle some fears, if you will, or calm some fears. Uh, earlier this year, Medicare announced that they were going to be sending out comparative billing reports to chiropractic physicians, uh, to certain chiropractic physicians, beginning uh, uh, at the end of January, early February. Um, and you'll get that. It'll indicate that it's a CBR, that's comparative billing report. Um, first of all, I just want to, uh, to make sure everybody just takes a deep breath. Uh, if you happen to receive one of these, let me tell you what it is not. A comparative billing report or a CBR is not an indication of wrongdoing. It's not an audit. It's not a medical review. It's not a, it's not a prompt to change your care, uh, your, your, your clinical care that you're providing. It's also not any kind of request for a response. So you don't have to respond to the, to the CBR. Instead, what it is, it's, it's they issue these because your billing pattern is different uh, from your peers, from other chiropractic physicians. So basically, uh, you fall in kind of an anomaly type scale in one of three primary areas. And, and we'll cover those in just a minute. But the biggest thing is take a deep breath. This isn't an audit. It's nothing to fear. Instead, it gives you an opportunity to be able to take a look at your billing patterns, take a look at what they're providing and say, do I need to make some adjustments? Is my documentation up to snuff? Is it, you know, what do I need to do? If anything, uh, it may just be that uh, that your Medicare population dictates uh, the care that you're providing um, uh, for your particular practice. And so some of this may be superfluous, right? It may not be a big deal at all. So what are they addressing inside of these CBRs? The particular one that we're talking about in 2022 really is centered around three different things. It's average allowed services per beneficiary throughout throughout the, 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 the outlook period, so through a year, if you will. Um, a percentage of CMT, spinal services billed um, with 98942. So again, that's the five region adjustment code. Um, and if that one is skewed, that, that, that's probably the, the biggest red flag in all of these things. All of them are important, don't get me wrong, but that's the easiest one to address because you need to make sure that you are meeting uh, the documentation requirements for all five regions if you're billing a 98942 and that your diagnosis codes are reflecting uh, um, you know, all five regions and care to all five regions. So uh, th that's gonna be the easiest one to take a look at, right? And then the last one is percentage of claims billed with the modifier AT. Now, uh, apparently the way that they did that particular study um, was that they compared uh, those claims submitted without an AT or in total, probably is a better way to put it, uh, versus those with an AT modifier. So uh, if you're doing maintenance care and you're submitting it to Medicare, of course, they're going to deny it if you don't include the AT modifier, which you shouldn't be on maintenance care. Um, but uh, they're comparing your AT billings against your total population of CMT billings to Medicare. So that, that's that per particular percentage that they're looking at. Um, and so if you have a heavy Medicare practice and, and many of your patients may choose through their ABN form to not have you bill Medicare and those particular, it could actually skew your numbers a little bit um, uh, in those particular regards. So just be aware of that when you go to look at the report. Now, um, what, is, what does all this mean? Again, I wanna double back. It's for information, educational purposes. That's the idea. Um, and this is a part of the integrity process that Medicare instills uh, to ensure that the program continues to have integrity. And, and this is one of the ways that they can educate the doctors without going through the full-fledged audit. So it is not an indication you've done anything growing. It is not an audit and you don't have to respond. We do encourage you to go ahead, look at your CBR, look at that report and determine, is this something that I, that I have a challenge with, that I have a bit of a problem that I need to address in my practice and then deal with that accordingly. In other words, it's an opportunity for you to educate yourself and improve if there's some areas to improve. Sometimes there aren't, and, but that's, that's why they do it, gives you the opportunity to take that action. Now, we also wanna make it, uh, make it easy for you to be able to get the information that you need um, and, and, uh, um, and, and take a look at exactly what all of this means. And so we've given you a quick link that gets you over to the CBR site uh, just go to ilcairo.org slash 2022CBR. That's 2022CBR. So ilcairo.org slash 2022CBR. 
And uh, in that particular case, it'll take you right over to the CBR site. Uh, it has a webinar, it has information, it has all the slides and transcripts of that webinar. Plus, it also gives you a link to be able to go look at your CBR and so answers a few other questions in there, but it's all on one page, shoot you over there. Hopefully that helps you out. Again, no need to panic. Many of you probably are gonna get it, it's okay. Um, just uh, a review, take a look at it. Is it something you need to address? Take action. Uh, fix if there's a fix that needs to happen. Make sure you improve your documentation if that's important. And hopefully this helps you out and we will catch you next week. Take care.